Here's what's coming up on episode 45 of the Big Seance Podcast. Christy Robinette. I've actually been tested by the CIA. Oh, just I've the been, CIA. No big deal. Yeah, yeah not a big <laughs> deal. Um, yeah, with some remote viewing testing. I have worked with police departments for over 10 years, and they wouldn't allow me to work on their cases if they didn't test me. She was a really intelligent little girl, and, and she looked at me and she said, are ghosts real? And I said, yes, ghosts are real, but... Most all of the time, they're not going to hurt you. They're very friendly. And she looked at her mother and she, she smacked her on the, you know, like on the hip. And she said, see, I told you they were real. <laughs> Every night I have this man that, and I don't know why this is going to make me cry. I have this man that comes out of my closet every single night and she described what he was wearing and I said well what does he do and she says he just smiles at me and then he goes back into my closet and I'm like okay and in the meantime I look at her mother and her mother's turning ghost white herself and she started to cry and she said that's my grandfather but it kind of ended funny because she goes do ghosts like bananas and I said no (laughs) I don't think they like bananas and she goes that's why they're not eating my bananas. <laughs> and the mom's like, that's why you have bananas in your closet. Uh, so I am. And you know what just happened? It was really weird. It must be like spirit because Ooh. I have a, I'm in my son's room and there is a squirrel in there that's knocking at the window. Oh my God. So it must be someone for you. <laughs> open the, open the window. Welcome to the Big Seance Podcast. I'm Patrick Keller of BigSeance.com, and this is a place for an open discussion on all things paranormal, but specifically topics like ghosts and hauntings, paranormal research, spirit communication, psychics and mediums, and life after death. So basically, anything that pops up in my paranormal world. The candles are already lit, so you might as well come on in and join the sands well happy middle of october to you i am so excited to share my conversation with someone i had a blast talking to and someone who i've followed online for quite a while now and that is christy robinette before i do that i unfortunately have to mention that my connection was dropped a few times You know, similarly to the experience with Keith Johnson recently. With Keith, he suspected that an energy connected with the Conjuring House may have been involved there. And this time with Christy, well, it may have been a visiting spirit in the form of a squirrel. And I suppose that could be true. (laughs) And as funny as it is, I really think... It might just be my connection during some of these interviews, and I'm going to be looking into some alternatives for the future. It is a little embarrassing, especially for great guests like Keith and Christy, so I do apologize. So, you're going to hear a few places where it sounds like a few words are dropped, and that's probably because a few words were dropped. The first one is obvious. And that's when our squirrel friend makes herself known. But in those few spots, I did my best to edit the interview while keeping the context and details intact. So there you go. I'll be back a little later with a special announcement and a funny iTunes review from someone who apparently did their homework from the last few episodes. Remember your homework? I hope you do. I'll catch you a little bit later. Here's my interview with Christy. All right, Paranerds. Christy Robinette is here in the parlor. And I'm willing to bet you folks know this lady already. I have to once again give credit to a man who I have looked up to for several years now, Jim Harold, who introduced me to Christy through his paranormal podcast a few years back, and I've been reading her books and following her ever since. 
Christy Robinette is a professional psychic medium. In addition to giving readings and teaching workshops, she uses her psychic skills to assist with police investigations. Christy lectures across the country and has appeared on Fox News, ABC News, and Coast to Coast. She is also the author of Forevermore, Guided in Spirit by Edgar Allan Poe, Messenger Between Worlds, True Stories from a Psychic Medium, Higher Intuitions Oracle, Ghosts of Southeast Michigan, and Michigan's Haunted Legends and Lore. And actually, the book we're going to talk about today is It's a Wonderful Afterlife. And I just finished reading this a little while ago, Inspiring True Stories from a Psychic Medium. How are you, Christy? I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me on. Uh, I'm so honored and excited. I I really nerd out with some of my um, medium nerds that I follow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love it because honestly, like I see you on Facebook every so often. And I know you comment on our crazy, you know, YouTube videos that we haven't made in forever in a day. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so I lo- love, I love. Oh, oh, are you there? Oh my gosh. We had a little. I am. And you second. know what just happened? It was really weird. It <laughs> must be like spirit because Ooh. I have a, I'm in my son's room because he's away at college mm-hmm. and I have like a flower, um, like a, what do you call it? You know, where I put flowers in, that uh-huh. would be like a flower pot. Uh-huh. No, but I'm playing charades with my son <laughs> and there, and it's connected to the house and there is a squirrel in there that's knocking at the window Oh my gosh. So it must be someone for you. <laughs> open the open the window. Oh Apparently my gosh. he wants to be like uh it's a it's a female squirrel and so there must be a grandmother energy on the other side that's like trying to get through. So right when we blacked out, I am like hosting a squirrel. <laughs> So well, weird. if you let that squirrel in your son's room, I would be so super impressed. That's like above <laughs> and beyond. <laughs> that won't happen. They've got claws, like big deal claws. Well, and speaking of Facebook, uh, anybody who follows you, you've had kind of some strange experiences lately. And um, I asked you earlier if you still had all of your appendages and everything. Man, it has been like the Salem witch trial all over again. And, you know, I, I I had someone say, well, this this is what comes with fame. And I don't believe that I'm famous, but I'm very connected to my friends on Facebook. Mm-hmm. So I'm very there. So, yeah, I had my Facebook duplicated and then people were trying to befriend my friends to get money and um i've had yeah it, it's been weird yesterday there was a, a newspaper article about me and all of a sudden i start getting <laughs> i start getting hate mail and i was at a library and i had this guy that was very hostile towards <laughs> me so i'm like seriously i'm trying to spread as much like love as possible and isn't it funny how when you do that you become a target for so much hate it is and so bizarre it really honestly is. It's like, okay, people, I'm doing free library events. I'm not getting paid. I'm selling my book, but that's what authors do. And you're calling me a con artist. <laughs> so I'm not sure. What, I'm like, so apparently all libraries, they're filled with con artists, all those darn authors. <laughs> that's where you can find them. They just need to have a stakeout, <laughs> find right. all the libraries. <laughs> all those broke authors that are getting a dollar a book, man. Well, we love you here. Nothing but good energy here. Yay. Unless that squirrel's trying to spread something. I don't know. (laughs) Maybe someone sent him. (laughs) I don't know. Maybe it's like, uh, I don't know. It's a spy squirrel or something. I'm not sure. (laughs) Well, and you know, you may have negative energy coming at you sometimes for some reason. But the thing I remember most about hearing your voice for the first time on the Paranormal Podcast is that I felt like you were the coolest normal person. I felt like you were just riding in the car to work with me and uh, just chatting it up. And I'm sure that other fe- others you know, out there feel the same. I think you've just got this crazy ability to make us feel like we've known you our whole lives, like, like you're a trusted neighbor or friend. How do you do that? Oh, oh, thank you. That's so sweet. No, really, honestly, I'm, ju- I'm just me. 
And I was a super shy girl growing up, very, very shy. Didn't have a lot of friends um, because of what I saw, heard, felt, sensed. You know, that, and, and I went to parochial school, so that wasn't necessarily accepted by my school, by my peers, by their parents. So I kept really, you know, very inside myself for so long. And now I've come outside of myself and watch out. <laughs> so <laughs> now you guys all have to hear me talk because there were so many years I didn't. <laughs> so, it's like I blossomed. I don't, but, but really, you know, I ended up finding myself and getting rid of a lot of negative in my life and finding supportive people to surround me in my life. And that outweighs any of the bad, even from the last week, it really does. And so you kind of um, hinted at this, but you, you didn't have the smoothest coming out experience as a medium growing up. And in case I have listeners who are having their first introduction to Christy Robinette, can you give us you know, I'm I'm sure that's a tall order. You know, a quick background of your entire childhood, <laughs> but give us a quick background of of some of those experiences. We've got about two hours, right? No, <laughs> um, I I was like I said, ever since I was born, I can remember seeing spirit, and I sat very much physical. So I see them flesh and blood, wearing clothing, not Casper the Friendly, ghost like. You know, I can make out hair color, eye color. It's not just a feeling. It's not just in the mind's eye. It's actually very physical for me. So being able to see that, you know, and nobody else able to see that in my house, that was a little bit, um, it was scary. And it sometimes still is scary when I wake up and I have someone in my bedroom, you know, ho hovering over me, wanting me to get a message to somebody. So it's, that's not normal. Yeah, so I was three and I had a lady that came through in spirit who told me that she was a relative, a great grandmother, and that I needed to let my mom know that my grandma was going to die. And that was the word that she used. So I went up to my mom and said, hey, this lady says grandma's going to die and um, ended up getting a spanking. So talk about going into the closet. I would actually do that literally and figuratively. I actually would go into a closet and talk to my, um, my guides, what I now know as my guides and my loved ones. But I also, I was a sensitive kid, still I'm a sensitive adult. And so if, I mean, all you had to do was look at me the wrong way and I knew I did wrong and I would change my behavior. So a spanking was like capital punishment. It was, you know, big time horrible. Wow. So I felt horrible when my grandmother unexpectedly passed away a couple of weeks after that prediction. And it wasn't long after that, that my parents decided, okay, she's talking to the air. She's having full blown conversations with the air and she's driving us crazy. So they, they took me to the local Lutheran school and said, you know, can she start early? So I was four when I began kindergarten and it just never went away. So I, I hibernated it for a long, long, long time until I was finally, um, I married a skeptic. Um, I divorced a skeptic. I had two beautiful kids with a skeptic. And then as when he went away, and it, it kind of goes with the whole thing that I said before with the hate, when that sort of fades away, you start to receive you can think again. You know, it's kind of like going to the eye doctor and not realizing that your prescription has changed until you actually get new glasses put on your face. And you're like, man, I was blind before and I didn't even know it. Mm. And so that was kind of what my life was like until that moment when I had this horrific divorce and I went to my minister and said, look, at, I'm seeing spirits and they're giving me information and I'm having conversations with them. And uh, one of his uh, children, who nobody knew that had passed away, uh, came through in spirit and gave me a message to give him. And it was life changing for both of us. And he said, you know, I think that you need to you need to go get a reading. 
And I'm like, wait, what? You know, this is a 70-year-old conservative Missouri Synod Lutheran pastor who on the pulpit's preaching that everything that I am sensing, seeing, feeling, hearing, experiencing is of the devil. And he's handing me a business card of a local media. Oh, it, it was bizarre. I ended up, I went to a psychiatrist and I went to a neurologist as well. And they all said, hey, you're a medium and this is what you're supposed to be doing. So somehow God placed me in the right hands with the right people. Well, what advice do you usually give to other young people who may be struggling to embrace their gift of mediumship? Or maybe what advice do you give to parents of these kids? I think that the the best thing to do if you're experiencing this is to find like-minded people, which is why I love these types of podcasts and radio shows and even Facebook now, because we have this family of, you know, people, everyone experiences things differently, but having this aha moment, like, oh my gosh, I'm not alone. Somebody else has had this experience. For parents, I always say to trust your child. You know, if, if they are, um, (laughs) <laughs> if they, I thought of a really kind of funny story. If they are, you know, having experiences, trust them. I was doing a book signing several years ago on one of the ghost books that I had written. And um, I had a little girl, probably all of five, six years old, come up to me at the book signing with, with her um, mother. And she said, you know, she reads the book. She was a really intelligent little girl and and she read the book and she read ghosts on it. And she looked at me and she said, are ghosts real? And I'm like, oh boy, I'm going to get in a whole bunch of trouble. (laughs) Um, you know, how do I answer this? You know, and I just felt like I had, you know, I, I had to answer how I felt. And I said, yes, ghosts are real, but most all of the time, they're not going to hurt you. They're very friendly. And she looked at her mother and she, she smacked her on the, you know, like on the hip. And she said, see, I told you they were real. <laughs> and she went on to say, this little girl goes on to explain the story. And she says, I have every night, I have this man that, com- and I don't know why this is going to make me cry. I have this man that comes out of my closet every single night. And she described what he was wearing. And she, I mean, she was in so detail. Like, I mean, she saw him and she's like every night. And I said, well, what does he do? And she says, he just smiles at me. And then he goes back into my closet and I'm like, okay. And in the meantime, I look at her mother and her mother's turning ghost white herself. And she started to cry. And she said, that's my grandfather. And I said, you've never asked her. Because this has been an ongoing thing for like a couple of years since she was like just a toddler. And she goes, I've never listened to her. And so I thought, how amazing that it just really takes a a second to listen to your kid. But it kind of ended funny because she goes, do ghosts like bananas? And I said, no, (laughs) I don't think they like bananas. And she goes, that's why they're not eating my bananas. <laughs> and the mom's like, that's why you have bananas in your closet. <laughs> so it all made sense. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's funny because my kids at school, you know, I'm a teacher. Um, once they figure out that I'm kind of a paranormal, like a paranormal nerd like this, they'll sometimes either write me a quick note and tell me a story or, I'm really careful not to get too nerdy with them with paranormal discussions, but um, I'm, I always write back or I'll, I'll talk to him and I'm like, you know, I believe you. And you know, Mm -hmm. they could be making it up for attention, but hopefully just me telling them that if they really did have stuff going on, it, it helps a little. It does. Yeah. My, one of my best friends in the reason how I met her is because she had a super active house that was creepy, like Amityville horror creepy. I mean, they had blood coming up from the floors and the walls and it, it was terrible. I mean, they ended up moving and they didn't have those experiences. So when they moved into the new house, um, the little girl started to have some sort of like she would look in the corner and she would wave and they would pick her up and she would, you know, say hi or bye. So she got freaked out. So I, so she, she went up, my friend Katie went up to her little girl and said, what is scaring you? Because she kept feeling like she was afraid of whatever was in the room. And the little girl's eyes grew really, really big. And she goes, bumblebees. 
There was no ghost at all. It was just her imaginary, you know, it's her imagination. So I thought, well, she told you <laughs> because it was the adult that was actually like petrified as the kid that's like, hey, yeah, fool job. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so which, which of the Claire's do you use in your mediumship? I'm geeky and I use all of them. Wow. So, yeah, I and and they don't always flow like all together, they sometimes it'll be two or three of them, or it will be, you know, one at a time, but pretty much it, it is all of them. So for those of us who aren't mediums, but are nerdy and never stop trying, what are some things that we can do to open ourselves up to receiving messages from spirit or past loved ones? So in, in the book, It's a Wonderful Afterlife, in the back of the book, I have several meditations. Oh, my gosh. You have a great appendix back there, by the way. It's amazing. I love it. Oh, thank you. I, and that was important when I talked to the publisher. I said, you know, the my point of writing the book wasn't to um, prove anything, I guess. It was more to allow other people to understand that there is no death. And that there is that ability to connect with our loved ones without having to make an appointment with a medium, without waiting three to four years, you know, and and spending thousands of dollars with these television mediums, when really all you have to do is go into your bedroom, turn everything off, the radio, put your phone away, put your laptop away, and dial the phone to the other side. And then listen, and you might have to, you might have to leave a message and you might have to call a couple times because they've probably called you several times and they're like, eh, you know, I guess we'll, we'll <laughs> keep not answering the phone. So if you continue to do the invitation to the person that you want, not to anybody, because that can set you up for some really, you know, huge trouble, but for specific people, you know, on the other side, then they'll eventually say, oh, hey, look, and I'm hearing that phone ringing. I better run and, and see, you know, who that is that's calling me and symbolically speaking. But um, yeah, so pretty much it's just shutting off so that you can tune in. So um, I always have to ask this every now and then, and, and you know, just know you're talking to a fellow believer right now, but my brain is kind of weird. There are many of us in the paranormal who know that there are paranormal events that happen that are truly real. And we know that people have psychic abilities and can talk to spirits and it all fascinates us, but our analytical brains often get in the way and we have to use both sides. Do people like us get on your nerves? Oh, heck no. <laughs> um, no, 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 no. It's those that are so naive, I guess. That's a horrible way of putting it. That actually make me very concerned because there are so many frauds in the world in every, you know, categorical, you know, way, whether it's the psychic world, the paranormal world, you know, the, the legal world, you know, there's, there's all these, you know, different people who want to take advantage of others. And so I'd rather have that, that skepticism. Am I actually very cynical and, and skeptical myself, which sounds very hypocritical, but I think that it's good. I mean, there are times where just like I explained with my friend, you know, questioning her friend, her, her daughter, you know, I don't always take it at face value. I have gone to locations where I want to believe what they're telling me, but I'm not seeing, sensing, you know, here, I'm not having that experience and I don't want to negate what they're saying. But a lot of times in this world, they think there's a camera following us, you know, whether we're ghost busting or whether we're doing a gallery reading and everyone wants their, you know, 15 minutes of fame of some sort. So mm -hmm. I always see it where the authenticity is coming from with anybody. But, oh, yeah, I mean, I this sounds terrible. I do concerts. I'm like, they're full of hogwash, but they're really convincing. So when people come after me for that same thing, I completely understand it. Why wouldn't you not get cynical when there's so many um, crappy people out there? Yeah. So do you ever let, uh, like, have you ever participated in scientific studies? You know, have you let anybody put your mediumship to the test? I have. Yeah. I, I've actually been tested by the CIA. Um, oh, just I've the been, CIA. No big yeah, deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not a big deal. Um, yeah. With some remote viewing testing. 
I've, I've been very successful with that. Um, I have worked with police departments for over 10 years, and they wouldn't allow me to work on their cases if they didn't test me. Mm. So I'm, I'm tested often, and, and I really, for me, as much as I didn't like tests in school, like don't give me an algebra test, but I think that, you know, I, I'm being, I don't want to say, I'm going to say it, I'm kind of tested every time I do a session, you know, because there's validation yeah. with it you know, any which, you know, way. And it's not like there's a male here, there's a female here, you know, and it's doing the South Park thing. You know, everyone's got an old person on the other side, right? So you, it, I'm, I'm being tested all the time and I have no problem with that. It's the ones that are skeptical and they're testing you and you know they're going to remain closed-minded that um, I just don't want to waste my time with that. Cause I'm not going to be able to convince them like the whole James branding. I get that thrown in my face an awful lot. You know, well, if you were so special, why don't you go get tested by James Randy? Well, you know what? Even if I wowed him, you know, or even say Penn from Penn and Teller, Penn Gillette, he is an absolutely huge skeptic because he's in the business of scamming people with his magic. Mm. So, and that was Randy too. Randy was a magician. So it's the same thing. They're not going to believe they're going to constantly think that you're up to no good. And I could be wrong, but weren't you working with, you know, investigators and policemen, uh, policemen, that sounded dorky police before <laughs> you even really um, were working, you know, as a private practice really first, was that yeah. kind of your training? Yeah, it really was. And, you know, still when I work with the police or the FBI or or any law enforcement agency, I'm not getting paid. This is a voluntary basis. So people who think that I'm doing this and, and I don't want anything in the media, you know, so if there's any huge cases, I pretty much ask them to eliminate me from their roster, not because, you know, I'm afraid to have my name out there, but because it's not about me. I'm just another tool for them to utilize. They're the ones that are working their butts off trying to solve these cases. They're my heroes. I'm, I'm just, you know, another, I, I just help. I'm sort of a dowsing rod for them, if you will. So I'm just another tool for them to utilize. And I, that also kind of, I don't want to say that irritating. Christy's on a roll from the last week. Um, but no, I, th I think that, you know, so many people think that we're profiting and there are some people profiting really, you know, uh, they're doing really well, you know, but there's some ministers that are profiting really well. Also, um, I just really just want my bills paid every month. <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what is your response when. Um, and I have a few friends like this. What is your response when someone tells you that they fear death? I can't convince them otherwise. I can just share with them the experiences that I've been given to the other side. I, I really honestly, the older I get, the more I realize I can't change anybody's mind about anything. So interesting is I have a, I have a, a client who is um, a nun in the Catholic church and she is dying and she has been um, stage four lung cancer for like three years, but she's petrified of dying, petrified. And I, I, am, I always, you know, in a very, I don't want this to sound insensitive, but I always tell her, I'm like, your whole world has been with God. Why are you so afraid of being able to go to the other side to be with the God that has been your work forever and ever. And she said, we all are afraid of dying. So I think that we kind of wrap in our head that maybe they're wrong. Maybe there isn't an afterlife or maybe I did something horrible and I'm going to go to a very horrible place. And we are our own worst enemies most all of the time. So it, I don't think it's the, I'm not afraid to die. I just don't want to be physically away from my kids. And that's my, so I, I'm fine with whatever is yet to come. But I think that that's also a fear of ours. It's not the afterlife per se. It's the, well, we're not going to be here anymore. Yeah, I guess it is kind of a, kind of a faith thing too, because every now and then I'm like, well, 
Because, I mean, I trust me, I am all the way there, pretty much believer. But then, uh, and I don't really have too much fear about death. But there's that small part <laughs> that's like, okay, was I, maybe I'm just being a giant dork with all this stuff. Maybe um, it's not, that's not really how it's going to work. I tell a story in the book um, of Zed. And I don't know if you remember, it's that the chapter, The Hell With It. Mm-hmm. And just to sort of make it into a smaller, you know, blip of, of that story is I was doing, um, I was hosting a radio show for, for several years and we were doing a segment on near death experiences. And he had called in and said, there's nothing. I died. I came back and all I saw was black. Didn't see anything. There is no afterlife. There's no heaven. There's no hell. There's no nothing. And I thought, gosh, that's, that's really disappointing. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> wow. Hmm. And and I've heard that from other people, but he ended up, um, I won't ruin the chapter for those that haven't read it, but he ended up realizing that he had so much darkness in his heart that when he passed away, that that's all he was able to see was the darkness in his heart. And that kind of created his, his afterlife. And he did a lot of work after recognizing that. And he he has since passed away. And I know that he's in a good place. He's visited me a couple times. So it's not just darkness. But I think, you know, just like when people, not to get into a theology debate, but people, you know, say, well, there's no God. You know, we don't see him. Well, there there's an there's a higher energy within all of us. We can utilize that. We we don't have to utilize that. There's light. You can't love and hate at the same time. And so I think that that kind of goes with death as well, that um, you can either believe or you don't believe. And if you don't believe, then, you know, you're probably going to get an awakening when you go to the other side. But the creation of what you want on the other side is going to be you're, you're going to it's going to take you a while. It's going to be like a pop quiz. Oh, crap. I didn't realize I was supposed to figure out what my afterlife was like. <laughs> Give me a second. No second. You're on a timer. Where do you want to go? What do you want to know? So while we've jumped into the book a little bit, I am a giant music nerd, too, because I teach music. Can you tell us about the rubber band man? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So my husband um, is Chuck Robinette, and his father's name is also Chuck Robinette, but um, because he was a uh, a symphony leader, orchestra leader, he was a recording musician, and he recorded a lot of songs. And one of the songs that he recorded on was the piano for Rubber Band Man. And um, he was a wonderful pianist. I've I never met him in the physical world. I've met him several times in in the spirit world, being able, which is kind of cool because I know who my father in law is. But he was, as everyone else would kind of describe, he was a little bit cocky. He was very good at what he did. He was arrogant, and he also liked um, his name on the on the spotlight. You know, he liked it up on that that marquee. And so Robinette with an E on the end looked better. So his last name is spelled differently than ours, which is kind of like a um it, it it's come into uh some funny instances and some some difficult instances because when Chuck and I went to get our marriage license, you have to put down your parents' last names and because his is spelled differently, <laughs> that caused all kinds of confusion. And, um, but once in a great while I'll be doing an event and they'll have my name spelled incorrectly. It'll have an E on the end. And Chuck's always like, ah, dad's got a hand in this one. Cause he's still like, he still likes to see his last name on that marquee. But, um, yeah, so he plays that. And that is a song that we often hear when he's trying to get a message through and to comfort his grandkids or to comfort Chuck or I. And that song's come on the radio interesting ways, such as we were on the way and we were on the way to his daughter's wedding. It was Halloween. And we had just like a regular kind of a radio station on. And all of a sudden rubber band man comes on, you know, so we know, okay, well, he's, he's definitely coming to the wedding. And that happened to his other daughter's uh, college graduation as well, she got into the car for us to drive her to the stadium, and Rubber Band Man came on. So they've had some interesting, and in this, in the book, I tell the story of Cora, who was going through 
a really bad relationship breakup and they decided to go to Tampa and spend some some away time and they got a great deal at this boutique hotel. And the reason why it was a great deal is because everyone was like 220 years old there, you know, <laughs> and they're 20. So they're like, great. So they're, you know, sitting poolside and uh, all of a sudden rubber band man comes on and they know, okay, we gotta, we gotta kick this, you know, this crappy mood. And um, <laughs> so it, it's always been an interesting thing with that. He's played on, he plays on games, people play and a lot of other different songs, with um the spinners and such so and we often get our messages through music because it's highly vibrational and we listen to music i mean there's so many of us that do i've only only known a handful of people are like i don't like music i thought that was interesting yeah so we we get the lyrics have meaning as well along with just the nudge that hey the song reminds me of my mom you know and that's why it's coming on well, and I love it because how often do you hear the rubber band man on the radio? It's not uh, very common. And when I read that in the book, the first thing I did was grab my phone and I pulled it up on YouTube. <laughs> and, you know, I had to listen to it like five times. And you can't just not get jiggy with it when, you know, yeah. the rubber band man comes on. Well, and then there's a couple different ones. There's one that does have his piano solo in it. Mm -hmm. So it's cute because our friends have their ringtones when Chuck calls. It's the piano solo uh, <laughs> of our band man. So it's just, it's pretty adorable. So often you host exercises on your social media using Oracle cards. And I sometimes love when I can catch those, I love joining in. I realize you probably don't need to, but are you a fan of other spirit communication tools as well? Yeah. Yeah, I, I actually, um, I utilize all different types. In fact, I did a, and this is the first time I've ever done this. I did a seance, which is another form of spirit communication as well. I did a seance for the book release at a beautiful old 1800s opera house. And in it, I had a, um, I utilized a scrying mirror, and I had never utilized one before. And I kept saying, okay, those of you, as I'm doing the seance, you know, peek into the scrying mirror and see if you see anything, take some photos. And if you don't know what that is, it's kind of like a black mirror that's got a glossy finish to it. So it's much like um, a crystal ball type of a thing that happens. We got some interesting situations that happen with that scrying mirror that um, I don't know if I can really understand except that it was you know spirit even those that were very skeptical one took a photo and the photo looks exactly like his brother now he looks nothing like his brother so for those of you that are like oh yeah it had a reflection of him he wasn't anywhere near the mirror you know he took a photo you know pretty far away there's nobody in front of it and it is it, i mean he's given me the side by side and it's not even matrixing. It's it was pretty incredible, and so yeah, I love Oracle. Um, I'm not a tarot fan, but I do have a deck of tarot that I I use sometimes. It's my crutch if I feel like there's a person that's blocking me. Mm -hmm. You know, they're looking at me, and it's kind of my way of opening the channels. Yeah, dowsing rods. I use those during investigations. People are fans of dowsing rods, and when I do paranormal investigations, I use all the other cool nerdy ghost gear of course i have the squirrel that's still knocking at the window i just want you to know that <laughs> I'm like, hi squirrel gone i know i can't wait like i'm gonna have to get off and take a picture of this darn squirrel <laughs> what, is, what do you want it's gonna bite through the window or something oh my gosh well that better be a chapter in the next book if that happens <laughs> you never know i had an awesome awesome story you know talking about you know, symbols and those that people that, um, you know, come back from the other side and give us the evidence that they're okay. I was at doing a book signing last week and I had this lady that came up to me and she goes, can I tell you my story and you can share it? And I said, sure. Well, her daughter was born handicapped and her one leg didn't work at all. Her right leg was, um, she was in a wheelchair. She could never walk. And she always got caught up in things, her leg. And so she ended up passing away last year. 
And at the funeral, there was all of these butterflies. And they thought, wow, this is this is her sign that she's okay. And they took a photo of these butterflies. And there was like five or six. And she showed me the photo. Every single one of those butterflies on the right side of their wing, it was like clipped off. Oh, my gosh. Like, like Craig wasn't, op- you know, operative. And I mean, it was amazing. It was like jaw dropping, amazing. And those are the signs that you know that. I mean, that's so not coincidental. I mean, when was the last time you saw, you know, five, six butterflies with their one wing clipped off? You know, it, it was it was just really kind of amazing that she would come through like that. And she said, and then later she found a frog and the frog had it leg all caught and like string and stuff and she had to pick up this frog and she had to get the string off of the leg and she said I used to have to do that to her all the time because she would crawl and that leg was pretty much dead and she would get caught up in everything and she said she felt like she was still helping her daughter from the other side it was just just amazing wow that's beautiful. And I don't even, I don't even see butterflies that often when I do see, you know, a butterfly, it's one by itself. And and I always think about that. I'm like, okay, is somebody here <laughs> hanging out with me. I don't see it. Butterflies very often. Yeah. Well, and t- our signs, we tend to get them in a, um, you know, like it's not going to be a coincidental type of a way. Mm-hmm. If your sign is smelling pine trees, And, you know, that's your sign from grandpa that you smell pine trees because he had a pine tree, you know, farm, a Christmas tree farm. And then during Christmas time, you're smelling pine trees. Yeah, that's that's, you know, because there are pine trees. So (laughs) that's one where you're not going to chalk up to saying, oh, grandpa's trying to get a message through to me. It's just because there's pine trees. You know, it's just like going to a butterfly sanctuary. There's going to be butterflies (laughs) there. So... It's it's those random types of um, messages, you know, or, or so-called coincidences that aren't coincidences at all. We went to a to a concert, Zach Brown Band, a couple. That was about a month ago now, and it was a freezing night. And as we sat there, a butterfly came and landed, and sat there on the side of the railing. It was at a at Comerica Park, um, the Detroit Tigers, and it just sat there through the entire concert. It sat there with us, and then the concert ended. And it went and flew away. I'm like, <laughs> okay, that was someone. At that point, I didn't know who that was, but that was someone, you know, trying to get a message to us and just enjoying some music. <laughs> That's awesome. We'll be right back with the rest of my interview with Christy Robinette. You're listening to the Big Seance Podcast with Patrick Keller. Look for us on iTunes and be sure to check out bigseance.com for more discussion. Greetings, Big Seance Podcast listeners. Your host has asked that I make a special guest appearance to let you know of some exciting episodes in the coming weeks. I'm not really sure how we got my email address. I don't usually do these podcast gigs, but it is hey. my favorite holiday, hey. and, and so I made an exception. Uh, excuse me. Oh, uh, oh hold hey. on, hold on. Uh, yes. Stick to the script, please. Oh, 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 sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. I just did three interviews this afternoon. Uh, what show is this again? Oh, the Big Seance uh, oh, Podcast. Oh, the Big Seance Podcast will have special episodes in the coming weeks to celebrate Halloween. You won't want to miss them. It'll be chilling, spooky, blood curdling. The ghosts and goblins will be there. I'm sure there will be face painting as well. Yada yada. Boo. Okay, am I done? Uh, yes. Oh, thank you. oh, excuse me. That's my hot pocket. I-, I can never get it hot enough in the microwave. Yes, Halloween is very nearby. And it is certainly beginning to look and feel Halloween y around my house. I can't wait to carve the pumpkins into jack-o'-lanterns this weekend. I always do that exactly one week before Halloween. Well, earlier, I told you I got a funny iTunes review. But before I read it, I have to remind you of your homework. 
Here's a clip of a recent episode where I assigned it. So here's your challenge. First, make sure you're subscribed. But then, grab a friend's phone, even if it's in secret. Even if it's when they get up to use the restroom at the restaurant. Although, if they're not into the paranormal, or maybe they're really big with muscles and could possibly beat you up or sit on you, then maybe that's not a good idea. But use your best judgment. Search for Big Seance Podcast in the app, hit subscribe, and then tell them how much they're going to love the show. And, uh, you know, get in touch with me and tell me how you did it. That would be funny. (laughs) Give me your best story about how you subscribed a friend to the show. I'm cracking myself up right now. And so here's what I saw in iTunes just today. A review by Mrs. BB, 1976. It's titled, Who Are You and How Did You Get Here? And there's a five-star rating submitted with it. And it says, I have no idea how this podcast ended up in my podcasts, but I am so glad it did. I listened to four episodes today and ran out of time. Can't wait until tomorrow. I love it. Someone is a star pupil. Mrs. BB, or whoever pulled a fast one on Mrs. BB, gets an A. Have you completed your assignment? Thanks for joining us for the Big Seance Podcast. We'd better get back to the table while there's still some candlelight left. Okay, here's the rest of my interview with Christy Robinette. I'll be releasing an episode with several past guests contributing their favorite memories or nostalgia or even spooky stories from Halloween. So do you, ha- and I should probably should have given you some warning about this, but do you, <laughs> do you have any traditions or favorite, favorite memories or nostalgia of Halloween? <laughs> this is going to sound like an SNL Debbie Downer story. <laughs> As I'm thinking, I'm like, Oh, where's the rah, rah. Um, <laughs> My because I grew up in a really parochial religious upbringing, mm. my parents hated Halloween, you know, so at school we could dress up, but it had to be like biblical characters. So <laughs> it's like there's not too much. Th- so you were like you could be an animal, you know, because that was on Noah's Ark, you know, or you could be like the Virgin Mary. That was pretty much all you could be. Oh. You couldn't dress as like the prostitute, you know, from the Bible, because even though it was in the Bible, that was wrong. So, yeah, no, <laughs> like, I have really, really sad memories. Of- <laughs> oh, that is a Debbie Downer. <laughs> But but every day my my sorry, my house was extremely haunted so um and not in a in a fun type of a way so we had horrifying things that happened you know in our home all year long so Halloween I think that my parents just didn't want to emphasize you know on the horror because we had experienced so much uh, terrible things in that home. Well, speaking of kind of scary moments and and Halloween, this has popped up in my last couple of episodes. And so I'm curious what your feelings are on it. Do you take stock in this whole, and you would know, the veil thinning uh, between the living and the dead around Halloween time? Is that a thing or is it no different than the rest of the year? You know, I don't think it's much different than the rest of the year, to be honest, except it's through intention. So I even will put on some of my flyers, the veil has thinned because it sounds really, you know, creepy. Well, yeah, it's cool. (laughs) It sounds cool. Yeah, it really does. But it's, it's more, it really depends on the moons and it depends on the astrological effects on those moons. The, The quote veil has been thinning because there's been so many people interested in it where it has allowed that part of that intention to come to fruition, you know, so there, there it's more known than, you know, back alleys talking about ghosts. I wonder if it ever happened. 
I never thought of that. That might be a new book. It's like um, <laughs> people, people like the Masonics, uh-huh. you know, it's kind of like the witches. But I wonder if there was any ever any like paranormal people that like met in hiding because they were afraid to to communicate, you know, about what they were experiencing. Interesting. Yeah. And keep us posted on that. <laughs> I might have to research that because, you know, during the spiritualist era, it became, you know, they were doing all of these seances. And but then after the Fox sisters said that they were frauding, you know, everybody with their seances, which I really don't think that they were. They were just like the Kardashians of the 1800s. So they were super popular and they were being, um, I mean, they were being hounded constantly to do seances completely. You didn't laugh. You didn't like the Fox sisters or the Kardashians of the 1800s. No. <laughs> you didn't. Apparently, I, no. I won't use that again. <laughs> no, I love that. I was actually going to make a comment when you were done. But I, I love the Fox sisters, and I love thinking about them as Kardashians. <laughs> but I also tend to feel the same way you do. I don't think they really were, um, you know, maybe a part of their story was there was some kind of fraudulent activity there. But I think for the most part, I think they have to be the real thing. And maybe that's just um, my nerdiness really wanting them to be the real thing. I love their story. Well, they actually, I mean, they through their, their ability to do the yes, no's, you know, they found that there was a guy that was buried in their, you know, underneath their porch. It's like, how else would they have, known that you know otherwise so i think you you have to kind of go back to the very beginning and say okay this was when it was all innocent and then it became so convoluted and it became all about money and fame and they they kind of stopped they weren't able to live i mean they they were being toured around like circus clowns and I have no idea what our original topic went off on a tangent, but um, yeah. <laughs> That's okay, because so, I'm just now getting the giggles about the car. It's like, wait a minute. I have no idea where this was going, <laughs> but it. I, I don't. I have no idea what you're I don't either, was. actually. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> so, yeah. So, there there you have it. The Fox sisters. <laughs> oh, oh, I know, because I was saying that there might have been these hidden types of media. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I am I just wonder, you know, if that, because just like the Masonics, you know, the Masons, they would go into the, and they still do, you know, very secretive society. I wonder if there still is like a secret society of mediums. Mm. I'm obviously not invited. In that I was going to say, but. I don't think you'd be bringing this up if you were a part of it. We need to get you, <laughs> need to get you invited so then you can write the secret book. They have like, what, what's it called? Like. <laughs> like Lilydale, you know, they have, oh, right, like right. Different, you know, types of, you know, places like that. Um, but yeah, so and, and it's not secret now, but they do have these, you know, places that you can feel secure about what you are teaching and, and learning and, and delving into. So, well, maybe there's like a cave underneath Lilydale where <laughs> they all retreat to. <laughs> I would like to think it's in the White House. <laughs> Oh, and, okay. Oh, yeah. So I'm I'm using my imagination, and they've locked them away because they're not using them at all. <laughs> you know, Abe Lincoln, the spirit of him, they've completely locked away, so he can't help anymore. You know, the Fox sisters stuff. are chilling out in <laughs> the White House. <laughs> they're they're at their little séance table, going, "Man, it's been years since they've brought me out of the closet." <laughs> So um, I kind of maybe know some of the answer to this question, but maybe not. And that's only because of like you were mentioning earlier with your wonderful husband, Chuck, your your seer and sayer YouTube show that I love so much that really, really needs to come back. It really does. Yeah. The most important question of the day, and this has been something I've been adding to the end of most episodes, is outside of anything paranormal outside of your psychic abilities, what kind of nerd are you? <laughs> well, well, I'm a, I'm an author. So that's a nerd right there. Book nerd. Yes. Yeah. I'm a huge book nerd. Uh, Chuck is as well. We both are music nerds. 
huge. We go to concerts um, frequently. So that's, that's something that we love to do. And mainly I work a whole lot. So that's just plain nerdish right there. <laughs> um, I do. I, and we, we both love to garden. We love flowers. We love old houses. I love history. Um, I love researching. I actually like my job. I like the whole paranormal psychic world. So to me, it's not even, you know, a J O B it is something that is a passion of mine. So that's, there, there's no outside of that in my realm, I guess. Yeah. It's, it's just a part of me. It's a thread of who I am. A lot of it, I think, on Seer and Sayer, we talk about, you know, the crazy TV shows that we like. Um, we both like Walking Dead, and we liked American Horror Story. I can't do this year. I Things just keep getting more and more violent on television, and either I'm getting really, really old, or <laughs> um, it's, it's just... I, I can't do it anymore. I think it's desensitizing to so many. Right now, we're like lovers of Longmire. Have you watched Longmire? I haven't even heard of that. Oh, my God. Oh, I got a crazy email from Netflix. It's a Netflix show. And they said, you might like Longmire. And I looked, and it's about like a, a, sher- a cowboy sheriff in Wyoming. And I'm like, yeah, right. Like, I'm going to like that. <laughs> But I went, eh, you know, I'll try it. Maybe they know me better than I know myself. Come to find out they do. Wow. So, yeah, they're psychic that way because they take all the shows that you like. You have to kind of do a questionnaire of the shows that you like, and they kind of can figure out the things that you might like to watch. So it's a very innocent um, kind of a a soap opera-y mystery type of a show. And it's been, I think it's going on the fourth season now. So I don't know where I was either. And you got to pick up speed, Patrick, come on. (laughs) So I think you would like it too. It's not paranormal, you know, type of a show, even though somebody died, it's a small town. And I'm like, how do all these people die? Like, where are all these people coming from to die soon? There's not going to be anyone in the town to die anymore, but it's, it's actually a really good show. And I love the Goldbergs. So if we talk about like innocent fun, I was a seventies kid. So it brings back a lot of memories. So that's my, that's my long, like 15 minute of the nerd that I am. (laughs) I can listen to nerdiness all day. That's okay. That's cool. (laughs) So uh, plug away and give us your web, your website and where we can find the new book or any of the other books and any events maybe that are going on. Cool stuff. Sure. So my website's christyrobinette.com and um, my books are all available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, pretty much anywhere books are sold. If they're not there, you can request it. Um, It's a wonderful afterlife. It's been out for about two months now. We're in third printing and I just called the publisher this morning to get more books and they said they're sold out again. So we're having a hard time keeping it in stock, which I think is a good thing. But uh, so I did see Amazon had like 15 of them available right now today. Uh, Events. I have events going on all of the time. This weekend, I'm heading to Cleveland, Ohio to a, a holistic health expo where I will be doing a workshop. So it is going to help to sort of tune in your psychic abilities. And I'm headlining it or co-headlining it with Marianne Winkowski. So for those of you that are like, wait, who is that? Yeah. She's the person that they had taken Ghost Whisperer off of. So James Van Prague had um, based the show off of Marianne. And so she only sees spirits that are grounded, that are earthbound. She doesn't see those on the other side. So it should be really, really interesting. And that's actually how I ended up meeting my best friends. So if if you're on Facebook or you see kind of the travels that we go through, our best friends, Mike and Yanni, we met them because of her, because he ended up going to an event of hers and she stopped him and gave him information about a loved one that had not crossed over. Like, so, like told the cemetery, like everything. And they have the, the person had a very, very unusual Dutch name. Like there's no way that she could have, you know, looked it up at all. And, um, and plus she didn't know who was coming. It wasn't a ticketed event. So, you know, it was pretty much general admission. So he ended up finding me and said, can you help? And I crossed a loved one over 
for them and we've become inseparable since. So I get to go thank her for, you know, somehow in a really weird cosmic way of <laughs> introducing, you know, us to, to best friends. So, so I'm doing that and I have a ton of, a ton of Halloween events that's coming up. Um, I do painting and paranormal thing where I go to this old town in Michigan and we do these paintings, creepy paintings with these artists. And then we go explore old haunted 1800s buildings. So I have one tonight, which is exciting. And I have one on the 29th of October as well. Well, cool. Christy, you completely rock. And this is, I talk about every now and then having Elvis moments. This is kind of one of those Elvis moments. And so I'm really glad that I got the, opportunity to chill and be nerdy with you and talk to you <laughs> on the podcast. Thank you so much. This was the most dysfunctional um radio interview that I've ever done because of me, not because of you, <laughs> but because of me. And the squirrel. At no seriously. <laughs> <I'm-> <laughs> oh my gosh, you'll have to take a picture and send it to me after the interview's done. I will. It's crazy. It's <laughs> Thank you so much for having me again. I really enjoyed this. You rock. For show notes, including links to anything we may have mentioned in this episode, visit bigseance.com, now the home of both the blog and the podcast. Just click on the Big Seance Podcast logo or find it in the menu. You can also find and subscribe to the show on iTunes and Stitcher. Do you have any comments or feedback? Please contact me at patrick at bigseance.com. You can call my feedback line at 7755-TELL-ME. That's 775-583-5563. You can also record audio feedback right from the site using the SpeakPipe link included in the show notes. I could decide to include your voice in a future show. Thank you so much for listening and reading. Unfortunately, it's time to blow the candles out. But we'll see you and light them again next time. you oh yeah i sometimes you trail off and then you come back in and so i was waiting for you to come back in and when you didn't i was like okay (laughs) she must have stopped and cut